Welcome back. Now, over the weekend at the Alamo rally, Alex asked some police officers, including the police chief, if they would disarm American citizens given an order to do so, or would they obey the Constitution? That's a question that's being asked of our military as well. And it's very troubling to see a lot of people at high levels being dismissed. Alex talked to a Navy SEAL about this very subject yesterday. It is a life and death situation that you listen to me very, very carefully. And that you go out and then research everything I'm about to tell you. Because this information is public. It's hiding in plain view. And we must create enough awakening out there to create a large public discussion of this. And then we'll be able to stop the implementation of gun confiscation and martial law and the complete fall of our republic to a homeland security dictatorship. We won't just be able to stop that. This could blow up in their face and we could actually reverse decades of globalist infiltration of our nation. Yesterday, I interviewed veteran Navy SEAL Ben Smith about sources that he has in special warfare who are now being questioned by higher level officers if they will fire on Americans during mass gun confiscation and that this is coming directly from the White House. I have confirmed this with Secret Service sources, corporate InfraGuard sources, clergy response team sources, FEMA sources, other Navy SEAL sources, Army sources, but most importantly, public document sources that we're going to put up on screen here. And go to these articles from Reuters and Forbes and InfoWars and follow the links to the official Army manuals. The new official Army manuals openly say the Founding Fathers are bad and would not be welcome in today's military. In Forbes and in the Washington Times, they openly report on West Point and the Pentagon drawing up plans for their new main enemy, not Al-Qaeda, not the Russians, not the Communist Chinese, but the Tea Party, gun owners, veterans. That's all been in the news. What is important here is that now it's not high-level officers telling us this. It's not even the non-commissioned officers like master sergeants. It is low-level people are now being briefed and trained and prepared for war during gun confiscation and the civil war that will start. This is foreign criminal globalist groups that have captured the federal government rolling this out against the American people. I am begging you, if you have friends or family in the military, to reach out to them, to send them this video, to show them these news articles, and to ask them where they stand. We need to stand with our military, with our police, to do the right thing and follow their oaths for the Bill of Rights and Constitution. Now, I want to show you a clip from yesterday's interview with the uh, retired Navy SEAL veteran, Mr. Smith, and then we're going to go back to last year in July and show a special report with Rob Dew, where our sources confirmed that they were training to shoot Americans that don't turn their guns in. And then another call today I got from a non-commissioned officer who broke down and cried because they hang up the Bill of Rights and Constitution in their break rooms where you can hang up anything you want, like softball, whatever's coming up, or political. They hung up the oath of office as well, the oath of the military. They're pulling them down. They're now under Homeland Security Command. And that's in the news, but they can't even have the Bill of Rights and Constitution or their oath. That's how criminal and illegitimate this is. This is history that is happening. And again, here are the three reports together. So you can see the documentation. Please get this report out to everyone you know, and we can stop this and back it off. Well, going back to the, the, the beginning of this administration, uh, there were, I've, I've had friends within the community talking about how they were brought in and, you know, questioned with people from, um, you know, more towards the top side. And the questioning resulted in kind of, do you feel comfortable disarming American citizens? And you can see that now with the shedding of a lot of the officers and stuff like that. It's, it's you know, we don't have the 100 percent track on it, but, you know, th there's a lot of funny things happening within 
military. They're now, trying now to that's bombshell, but I want to quantify that. I have Secret Service, FBI sources on record on the air, but also covert sources that are currently in. They say exactly that for two years. There is a litmus test where officers from the generals down to lieutenant generals, down to majors, down to sergeant, uh, you know, master sergeants, will you fire on U.S. citizens? And if you say no, you're sent to the worst hellhole or basically kicked out. If you say yes, you're put into special homeland security units. Quantify, you're saying yep. people in the community, special warfare community, are saying they have been brought into litmus test meetings. Yeah. And at this at this moment in this conversation, it's a uh, God, to bring it back to Van Jones. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Um, like, do you remember him? When he said, you have to, like, for us to have the argument or to just have the conversation logically, and what he was saying with, like, the communists and the lefties and the, everything that he, Van Jones is, it's you drop the radical pose for the radical ends. And just to translate that into what this is, you know, I understand a lot of libertarian Ron Paul, a lot of people that, that are your listeners. Um, get like fervent and very strong about it. And it's not about, you know, being that person that's the loudest right there, having that logical conversation to where uh, someone else can reply and you can go back with facts. And it's, it's a logical conversation that needs to be had. And it's starting to, you know, like I couldn't believe he asked um, that uh, Hammer actually asked me on air about, you know, it was it was kind of a surprise that he asked me. Like, you know, you think that the government's trying to declare martial law. I'm sitting there going like, oh, geez, is this an ambush? If I answer this wrong, this is, you know, everything goes down the drain and I'm a, I'm a, I'm a kook. But the thing is, Sheila Jackson Lee, you always have somebody. If you've even got the tightest plan, there's always somebody who gives up the jig. Freedom from war. State Department Publication 7277, released September 1961. The United States Program for General and Complete Disarmament and a Peaceful World. First, there must be immediate disarmament action. And this is written by our State Department. A goal of general and complete disarmament. Second, all disarmament obligations must be subject to effective international controls. You know what that means? No Second Amendment. Now you talk about the stages of the disarmament process. Third, adequate peacekeeping machinery must be established. Nations are unlikely to shed their means of self-protection in the absence of alternative ways to safeguard their legitimate interests, <laughs> like freedom from tyranny. This can only be achieved through progressive strengthening of international institutions under the United Nations and by creating United Nations Peace Force to enforce the peace as the disarmament process proceeds. You guys, you better get serious. You better start talking to people. You better start warning people because it's going to start happening soon. Here we go on page four. Arms and armed forces would be reduced. The armed forces of the United States and the Soviet Union would be limited to 2.1 million men each with appropriate levels not exceeding the amount for other militarily significant states. Levels of armaments would be correspondingly reduced and their production would be limited. This is all by a world body. This is not going to be through anything through our country. This is through the United Nations, which means there's no negotiations. There's only killing people and machine gunning them when they don't comply. And they go through a second stage and a third stage. Here we go in the third stage. The manufacture of armaments would be prohibited except for those agreed types and quantities to be used by the UN Peace Force and those required to maintain internal order. All other armaments would be destroyed or converted to peaceful purposes. Chris, you're on the air on the Alex Jones Show. Thanks for joining us. Um, I was with the 45th Infantry Brigade and Delta Company 1st at the 279 uh, 2nd Platoon. Um, during Hurricane Katrina, I'm kind of calling in on yesterday's subject. I'm sorry about that. For those that still have that slight hesitation in the back of their head that gun confiscation can't and won't happen here, it already has. And I was only 21 years old, just really gung-ho, really dedicated to the Army, especially to the infantry. 
And uh, I did whatever I was told. And, and what, what did they we, ask you to do? The first thing we did was we got a, a three-week uh, a book full of three-week-old 911 phone calls, right? So we were like cadaver dogs for about three weeks. And in between them, we would run night missions. And here's the thing. A lot of people may think that they'll see this on the news or they'll have time to to get ready when, you know, when the, when the crap hits the fan or whatever, it's just, it, it's a truck. You know what I mean? It's a group of trucks. They pull up, they stack right on your home as we did. And we broke entry. Yeah. We would yell out Oklahoma army national guard. Is anybody in need of assistance? But that's as we were booting in the door. Did anybody resist? Did anybody ever shoot back? What, what happened? Well, we had a, we had a couple of people uh, resist verbally and they got stuffed and cuffed very violently. Uh, we throw them in the back of the uh, the five ton or the deuce and a half or whatever, and then we take them out to uh, the Greyhound bus station, which was the police station at the time. But how how did you and your team justify to yourselves and each other that gun confiscation would help this situation when it was a free for all? I mean, isn't that yeah. a time when citizens need to be able to defend themselves? It never, you know, like I said, I was just ignorant as hell, and that's kind of something that I worry about with the with the kids today. You know, if they really realize what they're doing. You know, I had no idea. The only time it ever occurred to me that something may be wrong is we came up, uh, we were down by uh, the old French district. We came up to this man's house. He had a big wooden sign that says, I'm here alone uh, with my dog and my shotgun. Looters beware. We thought, you know, it's funny. Everyone stopped and took pictures of the sign. But eventually we took his guns. <laughs> and we left him there with nothing. I, You know, um so now that you know what you know, now that you're 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 listening to the Alex Jones show and you're you're informed, what would you advise people to do if this happens again? What do you do when they stack right? You know what I mean? And, yeah. And they're prepped to come into the home. There's no there's no negotiating with us. Trust me. There was no negotiating. Yeah. You, if you resisted, you died. That were the orders. You go after gunner, you die. We did a beta test here uh, up in the northeast region, and uh, we went out to all the units. And in all the armories, and you guys can all do this too in, at your police headquarters, at your army base, wherever you're at. Well, we started noticing mission changes uh, to where a memorandum came out to where DHS is now in basic complete control of the National Guard in an escalation of force slash an emergency. So we have guys that were starting to question this. So we decided to beta test on all the safety bulletin boards. And a few of the police departments have been doing it here because we want to figure out who's on board with this and who's not. So we put up the, not only the Bill of Rights of Constitution up on all the safety bulletin boards, but also the main commanding bulletin boards around the units to see who is going to take them down, who is going to give us basically some ruckus. And mind you, I am an NCO. We were seeing the routing out of who is actually pulling this stuff down, Alex. And... Forgive me for a second. It sounds like you're pretty freaked out. No, it, it's it's scary to know we've been infiltrated by actual foreign bank operatives. I mean, this this is this is legend. What's happening to this country? I mean, this is the takedown of America. What are you seeing happening when you post the Bill of Rights and Constitution? Uh, the, the commanders are at their discretion because of the uh, the tags, uh, and specifically the uh, basically the adjutant general. They're uh, they're taking them off, and uh, we're basically trying to fight back uh, through JAG. Forgive me for a moment. It's so evil. I know. I would cry, too. I've cried many times. Uh, so so what we did was we started figuring out, hey, who, who, who's who's making this come down here? And Jag said it was completely, completely constitutional. You do that. And, you know, some of them are, are, are on point with this. And uh, it, it all came down, to, like I said, through through mission changes. And, and I'll even publicly state it on air. You can all go to your governors and your National Guard and to your tag in your state which is the adjutant general for your National Guard, and you can ask them why they gave authority to the Department of Homeland Security over the National Guard and why the mission is now changing to gang insurrections, Alex. Why would they be doing that now? If there's not a timeline and sequence for the next six months, you know damn well what it is. But why is it now turning to not only the gang insurrections that they're focusing on for mission, now you're understanding why these commanders are starting to get the memos, including the upper echelon of NCOs, of why you would fire on Americans. I saw Homeland Security, when it was first being funded in 2002, on C-SPAN, Governor Ridge, say that you'll have to go to TSA to get a job, TSA will be on the streets, they'll be the national police force. That's why I knew 12 years ago or 11 years ago this was coming. Now it's all public. 
I'm telling you now, this is the takeover. And it's not my opinion. It's all there hiding in plain view. But the general public doesn't understand military affairs. The military does, and that's why they're our best hope, because they are patriotic men and women on average, and they are really concerned. And they need you to get concerned and learn about what's happening. Exposing this and causing a major debate about it can reverse it. But we are in the midst of a foreign banking takeover. Homeland Security is their fifth branch of the military, headed up by a former Pentagon guy to take over America. This is it. This is the secret police, the threat fusion centers. All of it is for us. Now, we can save America, but history is happening right now. We can stand against this. I'm not trying to scare you. You should be scared of not taking action and speaking out. You should be scared of letting this happen. The danger is in not standing against it. If you care about your family and are concerned, you better preserve this republic. It's the shield protecting us. Once it's gone, we're another third world dictatorship. Alex Jones signing off for InfoWars Nightly News.